Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com <sighs> My name is Jason Newland This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Number I don't know, number 56 or something like that So, I've been thinking about what new boring things I can do to really tap into that boredom, that pleasurable boredom-ness that you may get bored with. So I thought I might actually read from the phone book. Which is uh, <laughs> the most boring thing that anyone could ever do, and it feels a little bit too more too boring even for me to withstand doing that. But I might do. So only listen to this or watch this video when you can safely close your eyes, just to let you know that all my videos, all my mp3s since 2006 are all available to download for free on my website jasonnewland.com I've also got podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, I'm on Spotify, YouTube, you know, various different places and of course Facebook, Twitter and just opening the page of the um, phone book. Ugh, I don't fancy. I don't fancy reading out of the phone book. Oh, I could just a to list a to z listens of local resident numbers. Wow, I wonder if I'm in here. Doubt it. I need different glasses for this. These are my reading glasses. L M N. So my name's M N. My name isn't M N. My name is Newland. New land, L N N. New bit, new ling. There's a new ling. There's a new man. That's not me. Although I am kind of a new man. I'm uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. So, um, New Stone, Newton, New L, N E W L, H I J. So, yeah, no, there isn't. There's not that many new lands around, believe it or not. I've got a few people seem to add me on Facebook that have the same name, the same surname as me, but they're not the same, they're not related. Let's have a look, new, 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 N-E-W, new, Newark, Newberry, Newberry, New Bold. Makes me angry to hear new bold. I used to get called that at school. New bold, Jason New bold, New Zealand lamb was another thing I used to get called at school. Kids are so clever and quick. Newly, newly, Jason. Ah, ah, that's interesting. There is. 
a new land, a Jason. But it's not, it's in Essex. It's in, but it's not near here. It's not me. It's definitely not me because. Ah. That's interesting. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Is me saying there's no new lands and there is five, but they're not me. So the point of this, in case you have just come across this and thinking, what kind of hell have I arrived in? There's some random man, bald man wearing glasses, because I've shaved my head today, and reading out of a telephone book something that clearly hasn't existed for quite a few years yet I'm holding a copy of one and it seems to I'm waving back to um, Christy hi Christy I love Christy I love your surname I always liked your surname cool surname um, Oh, look, so, sh I've got an idea. Should I look at the hypno hypnotists or hypnotherapists in my area? I won't be in it. Because I'm, I do everything online. I don't really do, don't see humans. You know, sometimes I wonder if I'd be able to see humans. Not, not if I'd, not legally. I mean, I'm not, I'm not banned from seeing humans, but I wonder if, um, how I would get on with face-to-face -face sessions because I used to be a, a therapist I used to do counseling and hypnosis with people face-to-face -face, but I haven't done it for so long a few years that I'm not sure I would know what to do I suppose like I could sit down and say hello Christine says I should get a business going. I know, thanks Christine. I'm, I suppose really, uh, even, so I used to be a, a counselor and a, a hypnotherapist. Um, so I did, I did the hypnosis training back in 1999 and went from there but didn't really start practicing with people till 2006 and then in in 2007 for three years I did a counselling degree full time and then from 2009 onwards I practiced as a counsellor because I've qualified and then the third year was for the degree and I did that for about three years and then the the charities that I worked for just lost their funding due to political reasons and austerity and all that stuff and uh, I had to quit doing it because it didn't there was no money in my last year of working as a self-employed I earned five thousand pound can you believe it Christy says, I remember you saying that on your older videos, it was really helpful for those in addiction centers. Yeah, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I used to, um, how can I forget something that was really important to me? I used to do hypno, in 2006, I launched a chronic pain relief service locally and used to visit people in their homes and stuff like that. I did that for free, but I was working full time. But I also uh, led relaxation groups for a drug rehab center called Iceni and an alcoholic um, center. It's probably not the right term for it, but uh, out helping people with alcoholism and gambling addictions, uh, which was called Norcas. So I helped them. Uh, I did that for couple of years 
a year and a half, something like that, until I moved away to do the degree. Um, my my aim, life doesn't work out, does it, in this kind of a way that you plan sometimes. But my aim was to, I was influenced or motivated to become a counsellor because of the counsellors that I worked with in the drug and rehab centres. I say worked with, I volunteered, they were working. But they were all so lovely. And I thought, maybe if I did that, helped people, maybe I could be lovely too. That's kind of my thinking. Because they all just seemed so gentle and kind. So um, that's when I started looking into, and I asked advice, and my plan was to do the degree and then do my training during the degree, like my counselling hours, because I had to get 100 hours with the, with clients, and I was going to do that with in the charities that I was volunteering. But I've just seen a Brussels sprout on my floor. I was just I had a cooked uh, cooked myself a a roast dinner earlier, and. Uh, I've got this little boy that seems to want my attention. Oh. So I had a, yeah, I had a, I think it was, I think sometimes when things fall off my plate, when I'm eating, if it makes a noise, then I'll kind of remember to pick it up. But I think that Brussels sprout is as if it tried to escape from my plate and I didn't know where it was. So Andre's just giving daddy kisses. Give daddy kisses. He's getting a bit of a. Andre's got a bit of a following online. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. Give me kisses. Mm. He's got um. Brondolin says hello, hello, hi. You give daddy, you give daddy another kisses. Look. Oh, you sighing. He loves to sigh to go. <sighs> Christie's asking how old he's gotten very big since she's last saw him. This is your first seen him, yeah. He's now three years and two no, three years and three months old. So he was three years in probably August. I got him in September when he was uh, probably three, probably five months, five weeks old. He was, he was just um, able to eat solid foods when I got him. And the reason that I got him so early is because he kept fighting with his brother. So there was a lot of, they didn't get on very well. So he needed somewhere to come. And he ended up with me. And now look at him, it's a big, look how big he is. It's a very big boy now. He's the absolute love of my life, he is. It's amazing. He just said to me three years and four months ago that I would fall in love with a little furry poo machine like this. I would have said, no, 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 no. But I did. And having him in my life 
has transformed my life because he's just so important so important to me and he's so loving sometimes he's a little monkey sometimes as well yeah he's uh, Christy says he's big from all the droppings on, from my plate he does he does beg for my food sometimes the thing he likes most do you want to go go on then the things he likes most is my breakfast he actually thinks that when I when I get my breakfast ready it's his breakfast to the extent that sometimes I'll put my bowl of breakfast on the table next to my chair go back into the kitchen to get my coffee and when I walk back he's actually started eating the breakfast it doesn't happen very often but I catch him about to do it sometimes and uh, not best pleased when he does that but he absolutely loves um, what are they called not wheat bix shredded wheat I don't know what you call them in other countries but they're basically just square wheat thingies with holes in and they taste nice just drinking a cup of coffee no cup of tea it's really strange seeing myself without any hair and without a beard I just feel really naked it's very weird I mean, last night I had a full massive bushy Santa Claus beard and hair you know the ironic thing is one of the reasons I shave my head is because when my hair grows too long you can see that it's receding but logically that means that I don't want anyone to think that I might be going bald so therefore I just shave all my head off and I'm bald and everyone would think that I am bald so there's not a lot of uh, logic to that so I've got these glasses on these are the oh got something to say tap on record oh something just came up uh, some YouTube thing Oh, I just realized I haven't put my video on do not disturb but hi Anne hi uh, I suppose if anyone does ring me up at this time of the night it's because it's an important phone call because it's like half three or something like that but I didn't wake up until seven o'clock this evening I had a very long, long sleep yesterday, or yeah, because the last week or so I've had Andre, I've just left him to do what he wants, which means I don't get any proper sleep because he comes and goes, jumps on the bed, plays, and everything like that. Because he doesn't sleep for eight hours, he sleeps about probably 18 hours a day but it's in bits it's in like you know and when he is awake he's awake and he's making noise and he's getting into the kitchen cupboards and knocking all the tins out and rearranging the flat and moving things around and making little nests around the place and basically just trying to wind me up I think and also who knows I don't know what what he's like right now he's fully awake and I don't know what his uh, his intentions are right now I could I don't know if I can turn this around you can have a look see what he's doing There you go. 
that's all these toys and all these bits. So that's what he does. So last night I put him in his cage, or early hours of this morning, probably about seven o'clock this morning. And I just gave myself a bit of space to just sleep, closed the door, took my socks off. That sounds like a really weird description of my sleeping procedure before going to sleep. I put Andre in his cage, put the ferry in a cage and take my socks off. Yeah. So, so Andre's a ferret, but he's a mixed breed between uh, like a polecat and a ferret. He's not like a pure ferret, he's not a pure polecat. He's, he's sort of semi-wild as it were, but he's not wild obviously because he's tame as anything now, but he was wild when I got him. Even though he was, brought, he was uh, born into captivity, he was uh, very, very vicious. But now, he, he gets vicious sometimes, but he's generally calm. He, he's, he's kind of like a, he does not like doing anything that he doesn't want to do. It's all about him. It's all, you know, I suppose we're all like that really, aren't we? I suppose in a way. And I wish I had pockets there so I could put my hands in my pockets and relax my shoulders a bit more. I can still relax them, but I just, it feels like this should have pockets. You know what I mean? You know, sometimes it's like you see someone wearing a hat and you think, I should have a feather at the side of that hat sticking out. It just doesn't look right without a feather. Or maybe a bicycle. You just... It should have a horn. It should have like a little... I'm doing a really quiet horn because this is a sleep session. Right, I was going to look at this to see if there's any hypnosis sessions, hypnotherapies. So just bear with me. H, H, I, so H. So this, the point of this session, although there's those of you that are like watching it live, that might not be um, listening, watching it, or not knowing what it is, or what the point is of it, um, but I've been doing these videos for a few months now. This is the 56 one. And uh, the real, just the point is that I just am really boring. And people can, it's, it's a mixture of things, I suppose. There's, there's the boring aspect. So if I was just to make a video or just to make an audio, you've got the me just talking about stuff. But then when I go live, there's the, the added potential of company. Just having someone, someone there live, just talking. Hi Brooke, and now I feel pressured feel like my future boss is watching me. <laughs> so that's kind of what the uh, the point of these is. You've got the, the boringness of it with the let me bore you to sleep. But there's also the intention of something else that you might gain from it. And I think that's what's quite good about anything, anything that you do, like reading a book, you can gain something that might not have uh, 
like entered your mind before you decided to read that book? Brooks says, there's no pressure, okay. Um, so I was, uh, for those of you, I was gonna read that other phone book. I thought that'd be a, a really good thing to do. I don't always have the best ideas. <laughs> but at the same time, for those listening back to this, you know, for those listening live or watching live, it's maybe you know, quite a, a weird, can be a bit of a weird thing, especially if it's in the middle of the day for where you are and you're not lying there with your your eye blind things on and your curtains drawn and your hot water bottle. You know, you might, so it might not be there for you for that, for what you want. But if you're listening to this later or watching this later, when you, the person that might struggle to sleep or they're so used to listening to my voice and when they do listen to my voice, it just sends them off into a, like a, maybe a sense of comfort, or hopefully a sense of safety as well. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you feel a bit safer when I haven't got the beard and maybe it's better when I've got the beard, I don't know. Christy says, do you still do the YouTube videos? Yeah, this is this is a YouTube video, uh, in a sense. Um, I've got 445, I think, videos on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. And every time I make a video, I upload it. But unlike before, I used to, even when I did an audio, I would convert it into a video by adding a picture and then it'll be a video but now I only make videos the only videos that I upload to YouTube are the ones where I'm actually on the video if that makes sense sort of moving moving pictures as it were I think they used to be called but uh, my old stuff's on there even from 2007 2008 maybe 2009, 10, 11, 12, you know, all, all the different years. Um, it's kind of weird because I've been going through them from my website. So I'm going through a lot of different things and updating, um, trying to organize everything so it's easier to find on the actual website. And I'm coming across sessions that I'd forgotten about. Uh, for example, uh, a lady on Facebook asked me to, if I would make a session on a particular subject. And then over the last two days, I found two sessions that actually would uh, kind of fit together with that, with what she needed. So I just sent them to her. But it's the same with the videos. I'm seeing videos where I'm in a specific room because unlike lately the last three years all my videos have been done in here in my flat but in the past I used to do videos in therapy rooms uh, that I worked I used to do them in a Buddhist center I used to do them where I lived so it's lots of different places that you see you can kind of get a map of my life over that period of time different places that I've lived and worked but at the moment everything's done here so which I'm, I'm okay with it's it's fairly quiet it's a little bit echoey because I don't have much furniture but I'm very minimalist hi Tonya uh, Christy says you put me to sleep many many nights thank you um, yeah I think what happened you know what happened Christy is I never realized that I was boring. I didn't realize how boring my videos were gonna be. When I first started, I was interested in chronic pain relief and then other people, because I was doing the live sessions with the relaxation, with groups, they started asking me to make CDs for them. 
So I did, I recorded it live, converted it into a CD, and then then I thought, well, I'm, I'm getting through so many CDs and it's costing a charity a fair bit of money and work to produce these CDs. So then I started just um, putting them onto my website so people could download the link, you know, the MP3s. And then that's where it all came from. But then people started asking for sleep. And that's the thing that has been most requested is, you know, me being boring for people. Uh, so you said, I did a video for your son. I appreciate it so much. It helped, really helped him. Oh, did I? I don't remember that. Well, that's cool. Uh, Christy says, I'm not boring. <laughs> Thank you. No, I, I, I am, but I'm not. If I think if that makes sense, I. It's hard to explain it. I don't really know how to explain it, but I'm not. Uh, I don't talk quickly, although when I say the word quickly, I do whistle, and I don't know why. Because as far as I'm aware, I don't have any speech issues, but I whistle whistle when I say whistle actually whist wasn't a good idea to whistle it's a sleep session whistling loudly but there's that connection isn't there to if you listen to somebody and you listen to them uh, doing a relaxation session and there's that connection so some people would connect even seeing me on camera to um, a sense of uh, maybe comfort, safety, relaxation, if that is what they've been listening to or watching me do. Does, does that make sense? Uh, in the same way, it's just, a, I guess, a trigger, but with the voice. And, and also, I used to say that a lot in my videos and my, in my sessions, that every time you hear my voice, you'll feel relaxed, you'll feel calm. And I don't say that so much nowadays, but I used to. But so I'm not I'm not boring you yet. I'm trying to. I will if I start. Don't test me because I will. I'll start reading out of this book. I'll start reading the health clubs and fitness centres. Or what about? Plumbers Merchants, GNM, Plumbers and Heating Supplies. We offer su <laughs> we offer superb prices on a huge range of heating controls, radiators, plumbing accessories, water softeners, boilers, and tools. One of my earlier "Let Me Bore You to Sleep" sessions. I think it's just an audio, so it, well, it's not on YouTube, but it's on my website. Um, it's like number two or three in the in the, the list, but it's also on SoundCloud, Spotify, or some place like that. I literally read out the stats from my podcasts at that time that they were, and um, I actually deleted those podcasts and had to start new ones. But I was reading the stats from each country and each town from each country in each on each month and then each day and it went on for about an hour over an hour and that was particularly boring I was quite pleased with that I had a friend who told me that that was one of the most boring things he'd ever experienced in his life and there's something quite nice to get told. Usually when someone tells you that that was the most, when you were talking, that's the most boring thing that I've ever heard. Usually that's not a compliment, but in this instance, it can be. So I've kind of, I've set myself up to win, regardless of, of what happens. Because if someone says to me, you're boring, I say, thanks. If they say, you really helped me, I can say thanks. So either way, it's a win for me. 
Oh, thank you for whoever's sending love, love hearts. So I've decided uh, I'm not drinking Coke tonight. Andre's making a lot of noise behind me. Not sure what he's up to. There he is, look. He loves making noise. It's as if like it's completely quiet, silent, asleep. As soon as I press play or record on a video, you hear him. He hasn't done that all day. Right now he's decided to make lots of noise. It's just, it's a wind up. So yeah, I decided to drink some tea today instead of Coke because I made a recording, I made a video yesterday and I was sitting in my black chair and I'm not gonna tell you exactly what went through my mind but just say I didn't look the slimmest I've ever looked. And I thought, oh, maybe I need to sort of cut down some of my sugar intake and um, perhaps go back to the gym, get myself a little bit of, lose a bit of weight. I mean, to be fair, by shaving off my beard, I probably lost about a stone. So that's, that's quite good. Christy says he just looks like a real child. He, he is. He's just like a ch he is just like a real child. He's stubborn, wants his own way all the time. Everything's about him. It's you know if, when he's hungry he wants to eat. When I'm hungry he wants to eat my food. And what's weird is I'll, I'll actually offer him bits of food and he won't want it. But once it's inside my mouth, he wants it. So everything that I put in my mouth, he wants to eat. It's, I think he thinks he's a seagull or something. And you know, I'm his mum and I'm supposed to like feed him that way. Very strange. I'm trying to be careful how I drink. I don't want to upset anyone with the drink sounds. <laughs> so Christy says, is he gonna get a playmate? No, he's, um, I have thought about it, but he has his relative, his uncle, who's a polecat, lives locally, and they fight. They really fight hard and He's so territorial with my home. He doesn't he doesn't like he doesn't like other animals. He just really he's fine with humans, but when it comes to other animals, he's really quite vicious. I don't understand why he's like that, but it might be because he's had so much freedom. He's had a whole flat. It's a one bedroom, but there's one, two, three, four, five rooms plus a a hallway um, you know if you include the kitchen bathroom living room bedroom and the storage room which is quite big as well and the hallway so he's had all that access to kind of come and go and do whatever he wants and I suppose that's quite a considering how little he is that's quite a large space not compared to how it would be in the wild because he'd be running around running through fields and all that stuff that's my stomach that was. And again. I do wonder, I've got this microphone. Look, the microphone's there, but this is the, the power pack for the microphone. But I don't know 
there's a battery in it but I don't know when the battery starts to run out so I might be standing here or sitting here rather talking and the batteries run out and I won't even know and again that's a really boring thing to say I think what it is is I find over the last few years I've caught myself being boring and I realize that why that, that sometimes I just stop myself halfway through a, a sentence and say oh that that was I'm boring myself now I'm gonna just I'll leave that so yeah that's kind of why I do this but this isn't all I do I do um, at the moment I'm very much focused on making my website as nice and organized as possible that's something that I'm really working on um, but back to what Christy says uh, I'm, I'd love to get him I thought about getting him a little a little ferret you know a baby and to see whether or not he'd be a daddy a good dad and to look after him and to nurture him you know all that and maybe they'll sleep together and stuff but I don't know I'm not sure it'd have to be a boy um, but I just worry that Andre would be too rough and I don't want that I don't want you know that I just wouldn't want him to get too rough you know but he can't help it it's, it's his nature to to play very roughly he does it with me he scratches me bites me but that's because I let him because we'd like play fight and stuff of course I'd bite him of course not really so let's have a look hypnotherapy I'm trying to think I'm getting a memory for you Christy I remember just the, not you but I remember the yeah I'm beginning to remember because we've spoken in the past haven't we ages ago I might come to America and if I do then I might try and see if there's somewhere that people can come and come and have a like a session as it were with me so, or you're know, not not one on one, but like in a group or like a, a meet and greet or something like that, because it would be a, an opportunity. Because I've never been to America, but most of the people that listen to my sessions or watch my videos are from America. So I think it would be. Uh, nice to maybe try and uh, yeah so Christy you'd be there cool welcome welcome I'd be really good it's, I'd, the thing is because I'm in England pretty much wherever I held something here wherever you were in England you could get to it because it's such a tiny country in comparison to America you don't need planes to get to the other side of this country just a train a few hours and you're there I think six hours is the longest train journey pretty much that you're going to take to get to like Scotland or something from here but if I went to America let's say for example Boston or Texas or I don't know wherever it was you might have to travel long distances 
but um, yeah, if you you're welcome to come visit, well not welcome, but you know, come come visit to England and we can have a coffee or a cup of tea. I wonder how loud that um, tea drinking is with the microphone this close to me. So that is something I've been thinking about. I do wonder what the uh, well, I wonder what the future for this stuff that I do is. was it's Andre's I think he's snoring I'm sometimes he's asleep and he makes these really strange noises like whining noises I think he's dreaming about stuff I don't wonder what it is though I was really sad that Big Brother was cancelled over there. It was my favourite thing to watch. Yeah, did did you watch it? Did you watch it? Um, this series, it um, got cancelled on Channel Five, so they they did the last one. It ended like two weeks ago, I think. But who knows? There might be another one sometime. I remember the first Big Brother I watched. Uh, that's back in 2000 I think it started in 2000 and I was always busy on a Friday night so I never got to see the evictions for the first two years so I in 2000 in 2001 I didn't see the evictions, but I used to watch it throughout the week. And back then, we didn't have uh, playback television, catch-up television, internet television, that kind of stuff. So there was no way of watching it. Because they didn't, unless they did show the repeats, they might have showed the repeat on a Sunday or Saturday. So I'm not 100%, I might have seen it, but not live anyway. And probably my favourite ever series was the first one because it was so new and it was uh, going thinking about it now it was so controversial but it wasn't there was all this controversy about what was going on yet it's now it seems silly because it was silliness it was it wasn't important at all it was just a television show but uh it was so popular in my country at the time and I think it'd be quite cool if they made available all the seasons of Big Brother every episode of every season from the start for every every country that does it just so we could you know just watch them if we wanted to go back and Rewatch a whole series, which I might do because I missed two series. So I had a couple of years where I didn't have a television. Uh, well, one year I didn't have a television, and the second year, yeah, it was 2011. Yeah, 2011, I didn't didn't have a television oh they're all on YouTube okay so um, in 2012 I didn't watch it either which I don't really understand why not but those were the, 2011 was the first year that it went on to channel 5 after being on channel 4 uh, for what, 11 years I suppose it would have been at that point 
2000 to 2010, including 2010, so that would be 11 years. But up to that point, I watched it every single year. And after 2001, I watched all the evictions as well. Because I was no longer doing what I used to do on a Friday night. But yeah, that was quite cool. I do have a, I'm trying to think what other shows. I don't really, the jungle one, you know, get me out of here. I'm in a jungle thing that's on telly. That's starting next Sunday or something like that. Um, but yeah, so Emma Willis. Yeah, Emma Willis. I, I didn't really know who she was until uh, she sort of hosts Big Brother or, what, or did host Big Brother for the last what, three years, four years, maybe longer. Two, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, maybe six years even. Emma Willis smile because I think was it two thousand eleven. She didn't host it. Two thousand twelve, she didn't host it, but she might have hosted it in two thousand thirteen, two thousand fourteen, two thousand fifteen, two thousand sixteen, two thousand seventeen, two thousand and eighteen. So yeah, maybe six years I was quite surprised that uh, and you, as um, Christy says she's very beautiful and yeah she's, she used to be a model before she became a television presenter she's married to a former pop star who is in a band called something no, not some, that wasn't the name of them, but I forget, I forget what the name of the band, it wasn't Blue, it was Five, I think it was Five, that was the name of the band, and they're very big in uh, the UK of England. Oh look, insurance companies, see that's what I used to do when I was working from 2001. September uh, I had a job in this uh, it was phoning people up in a call center so I, I was I wasn't phoning people that were in a call center I was in a call center phoning people at home or wherever they were trying to sell them telephone mobile telephone contracts or if you're in America, cell phone contracts. So what the job, my job was to offer them a free phone if they took a contract for a, a, a year long or two year contract, something like that, a tariff of some kind. And I did that for a few months. I was quite good at it, but it was uh, quite an unusual job, as it was, quite an unusual job. But I did it for a while. And then I got a job in insurance, doing kind of the same thing. But this time I wasn't phoning people, they were phoning me. I was taking inbound calls and I worked for Churchill Insurance, which is a big insurance company in England. And uh, so I did, I was, I did really well there. Kind of, I was successful as it were. So I'm just, I'm just uh, reading the book as I talk. Household insurance, hmm. See, so this is the local paper, the local classified, but the insurance companies are all national. They're not, they're not insurance companies local at all. And the reason I know that is because 
there are hardly any insurance companies at all in my um, area where I live. In fact, I think I found only one, two, yeah, two that are actually listed. And one is an insurance for carriages. It's a carriage house insurance. Spring Farm, Higham Road, and that's Colchester. And another one is Glover and How, or Ho, Who, How, Insurance Services. But other than that, there are a couple of insurance companies, but they're not listed for some reason. then even local insurance companies are like the call centers they may be based in my town or near where I live but they're national in fact one of them is international it's called um, um, what's it called it's a name that I'd I should remember um, I forget but there's the insurance company I worked for in this the last insurance company I worked for actually closed down there is another insurance company somewhere oh it's a locksmith You know what, years ago, I've never really been much of a, like, manly man, I'm quite a, I don't know, whatever manly man is, but I don't really get excited by football or cars or car engines or sports really, necessarily, but I remember I went into a hardware store with my dad in I think it was about 2000 and yeah about 2004 maybe 2006 and I remember walking through the drill section because he was looking at the doors he was looking at buying a, a new door or something like that and I couldn't really couldn't build up any interest in that so I went for I'd go for a little walk and I came and I came across the drill section and all these uh, power tools and I had this sudden surge within me and I think it stimulated my Neanderthal part you know my caveman part where I just, I didn't start growling or anything. I didn't start like grunting and, you know, banging my chest or anything like that. But I really, there was a tiny little part of me just thought, ooh, manly stuff. And then it went away. But that was the closest thing I ever came to really being like really manly power tools <laughs> so Let Letitia Cervantes is here watching or she was watching maybe she's gone but if you're still here hello Letty uh, another person that I've spoken to before a few times in the past and uh, I remember when I was at school and the other kids would kind of, not mock me, but kind of maybe thought that I wasn't very boy-like in a sense of, I didn't, I didn't play football. I, we were forced to play football at school. We were forced to go out and I put on the, the, the football costume and go outside and, you know, 
run around the field a few times and then people would pick people you know there'd be like two captains for each side and then they'd start picking people for their team and inevitably it was just I was always last being picked and I didn't even bother playing I just I just go up to the the post the goal post and I just turn around like Wonder Woman turn around till I got so dizzy and I just fell over that used to be what I did my friend Dean used to do that with me as well and so football wasn't really that good cricket I gave cricket a go in junior school and again I put the cricket costume on and I had the pads and everything and I was only little as well um, the knee pads looked like shields like I was holding up a big shield it covered my whole body but somehow so I was I was with the bat the bat was as tall as I was but I managed to do it the person who was chucking the ball managed to hit me in the knee so uh, that was the end of that I didn't want to do that anymore Plus, I wasn't allowed to touch a cricket bat either because I think I chased, chased the kid who chucked the ball at me. But I think, anyway. And then high school, I tried hockey. Well, I didn't sort of choose to do it, but we were told we had to do it. And uh, there was something about uh, equality, boys and girls doing similar things. I think the girls were allowed to play football and this is quite new back then because we're talking early 80s and it wasn't it was quite a a novel idea back then the idea of um, not men and girl boys and girls not, you know not sticking to their roles or whatever so Christy Christy says she didn't want she didn't want her boys playing sports because it became so aggressive. Yeah, I mean, there was aggression. I remember in hockey. So I had this, oh, my first time at hockey, and somebody hit me in the shins with a hockey stick. And I chased them with the hockey stick. And, well, I was banned. I was banned from playing hockey. So for the rest of the school, and I wasn't, so whenever they played hockey, everyone else would put the hockey um, costume on, and I'd have to like, run around the field, or sometimes I'd, I'd pretend to run around the field, but I'd find a bush and I'd just twirl around till I got dizzy. But yeah, so I did that. What other sports was there? There was the high jump, and I tried to explain to my teacher what's the point in competing in the high jump when I'm four foot tall and I'm competing against people that were twice as my size. There's no point competing against someone that's it's just silly. And the teacher said, "Oh, go on." I said, "Yeah, but." I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. I mean, I'm, okay, I'm not really four foot, but I'm not very tall. And I'm competing against someone that's, you know, six, over six foot sometimes. They could actually step over me. And they said, oh, go on now, give it a try. So I gave it a try and I couldn't do it. Because it just, you know, I didn't see the point either. I didn't see how that was going to help me in my future life. Being able to jump over a, a little metal bar onto some sand. And then there was the long jump. I had the idea when I was young that if I ran fast enough and I straightened my body out I could somehow kind of fly through the air 
and grab more distance. And also if I could, or another way, if I could jump up and then continue to jump, keep jumping while I was in the air, I could somehow get some kind of extra, extra distance. But it didn't work. So uh, I didn't didn't do that anymore. What other sports were there at school? Basketball. So oh, again, basketball really favours taller people. You know, because once someone's got a ball and they're just holding it up. And if when if you put your hand up and you're only reaching their belly button, there's no way you're going to get the ball out of their hand, which is way above their head, unless you tickle them in the belly button and they drop it. But I never tried that. What other sports was there? Tennis. Tennis is something that no one would play with me. I think everyone kind of got to the point where they thought they kind of gave up on me with sports. Apart from my friend Dean, who used to spin around and fall, fall on the ground dizzy. And uh, so Christy, you played basketball, but I was, I was, I was I liked the hoops. I'd like to I like playing it on my own where I could just practice getting it into the hole or into the, the net or whatever. So that's fun. That I really enjoyed. And um, it's like with football, I'm happy to kick balls from the penalty spot into an open goal all day long. And that's fun. But once you stick a goalie in there, once, you know, obstructions. Not, not a big fan of obstructions. You know, I like, I'm not a big, you know, it's, it's like sticking an elephant in the kitchen in front of the cooker. Like, it's, it's hard to cook food when you've got an elephant there. That's, it's not really the same, but for me, obstructions, I like things to be clear and smooth. tennis with my friend Dean I don't I mean bearing in mind I just sort of said that I wasn't particularly good at other sports I was better at tennis than he was well better at getting the ball onto the roof I suppose we used to have competitions and I, I could get onto the roof quicker than him but he we played tennis and actually I found someone around the same level as me but he, was ba he wasn't as good as me. And I wasn't very good either. And then I, I got a taste of what it must have been, like felt like a little bit for the other, other kids to want to play something and do it well, but then be kind of held back and not be able to, by someone that wasn't trying perhaps, or they felt wasn't trying. And then I took up karate and I was really good at it. It's the first sport that I attempted that I excelled at and I couldn't believe it. I was thinking, oh, I'm not, I'm just this, you know, why am I no good at sports? And, and then I found that actually kicking, punching, blocking, all that stuff I was good at and I loved it absolutely loved it and that was my passion for the last couple of years of school but I still didn't have the thing f I couldn't see the point in the other sports it's like it's just didn't see any point in it kicking a ball or hitting a ball over a net I just didn't I couldn't it, just even playing it didn't seem mu like much fun but I think maybe part of the reason is because I had two older brothers. And I like to blame them. I had uh, 
two older brothers, and which meant I was I was never I was always like third best at everything because they were older, they were bigger, stronger, more um, athletic. Both well, one of them was very athletic, but when it came to playing table tennis or any kinds of games, they always beat me. They never let me win anything, snooker, pool, or anything like that. So I think maybe I just didn't have the confidence to sort of give it a go maybe. But when it came to karate, they hadn't done any of that stuff so I didn't, there was no competition. I was suddenly able to do something that they weren't able to do, which they could have learned but they didn't, they were doing other things. So that felt quite nice, I kind of had my own thing. I suppose like I do with the online stuff that I do, it's my own thing and no one else does this, not like me anyway, we all do different, there's other people do these kinds of things but we do it, I do it differently and so I got into the martial arts not to, it wasn't about learning to fight, it was about learning, it was about fun, having fun and uh, absolutely loved it and I went on and did quite a few different martial arts over the years Wing Chun I even did a bit of praying mantis kung fu only a little bit though but I did some boxing what else did I do taekwondo I did but I had to stop because my lower back this is about three years ago my lower back um, has been causing me problems for since for about 20 years it's gradually it's just wear and tear really because in my 20s I had very very hard physical jobs uh, like loading lorries and full of like heavy things and I you know I, th I just maybe didn't look after my back how I could have done perhaps and also with the various uh, martial arts and the kicking and stuff maybe I just worn it out but so I, I've got a karate club across the road from where I live and I went there about last year but I just couldn't and I just it was just too much couldn't do it I can't it's, it's a shame it's uh, one of those things that I loved martial arts and I'm not saying I was ever any good but I loved it I think that's the that was my passion for quite a while I never really had how many passions have I had in my life? I used to be passionate about stand up comedy. I did that for ninety one to ninety to ninety eight. So that was one thing that I was passionate about. Christy says, Have you watched the Bohemian Rhapsody film? It was amazing. I've not watched it, I'm going to watch it when it comes out on um, on the internet. It's, if I had, you know what, it's, it's, don't judge me for this, like, don't judge me, don't, please don't judge me. I've got a, it's not that I'm old fashioned but I've just got a few things that are important to me. And one of the things that are important to me is if I go to the cinema, I like to go with my girlfriend or my partner at that time, you know. But I, to go into a cinema, I, I have gone on my own, but I haven't gone on my own for a long time. But there's something special about going to a cinema for me. It's, maybe it's just the way that I was uh, brought up, I don't, I don't know kind of what it is, and also I'm, I'm 48, so I'm not, I'm not like a, I suppose I've been around a while, but so I would have gone to see it if I had, uh, you know, if I was in a relationship with somebody, I probably would have gone to see that film. But as it is, I wouldn't want to go and see that kind of film on my own. Although I will, I do like to watch the superhero films. So yeah, I haven't 
hadn't been to the cinema in ages and ages and ages, years, in fact. And I'm trying to remember the last time I went. It was a superhero film. But I don't remember which one. It might have been like an Avengers or Thor or something like that. So it's going back quite a while, quite a couple of years, probably over three years. I don't think I've been to the cinema since I moved into my flat. And I've lived here for what would be four years in April, next April. So I don't get out that often, to be fair. But I will watch it when it comes on to, because I get um, Now TV, which in England it's, it's the Sky Movie Channel basically, so you get a thousand movies and whenever a new movie comes out uh, on DVD generally, not shortly after that it will come out on the the Now TV, so I'll, on Sky, so I'll watch it then. Which glasses am I wearing? These are my normal glasses, that's why I can't read anything. Ah, so these glasses, I can actually read the writing with these glasses, but I can't read them when I'm wearing my normal glasses, which is the normal glasses I read for, well, that I wear for distance. But everything's a lot clearer when I've got these reading glasses on. And that wasn't the most exciting thing that I said all day, but it wasn't the most boring either. So there. Paint spraying. You know, I sometimes think about getting an office. I could get an office somewhere cheap and then work out of there as a therapist, but also maybe have that office 24 hours a day for me, just for me. And then I could make videos in there, make audios and have it as a, a business, you know? And then see clients. But it costs an absolute fortune. Costs a lot of money. So I'll make do with reading out the telephone directory instead. Our legally trained advisors will tell you within minutes if you could make a claim Can you imagine in 20, 30, 40, 50 years time, this paper telephone directory? Would probably be really moldy, wouldn't it? They'll be extinct. I mean, it'll just, there won't be. Can you imagine? So I love books. The idea that you know everything's everything's online now, and you can get hold of rare books, uh, read them, you know MP3 or not MP3, PDF or uh, whatever uh, text format that they might come in. There's something nice about actually holding a book about smelling the, the print on the page. For me, I quite like that. You see, my favorite thing, when I lived in London, my favorite thing of all was to go up to the West End and just spend the afternoon looking around the bookshops. And then maybe buying a couple of books getting a takeaway or just having something to eat somewhere and then coming home and you know just that journey home on the tube on the central line 
with my carrier bag, with my two books or one book or three books, depending on what I got. And that kind of excitement to read the books when I got home and to add the books to my library. It used to be quite, I used to love it. That's something I miss about living in London is you've got everything that you need there kind of in a sense of entertainment except a beach yeah, no sea in London but you've got the Thames you've got places where there's water and you've got parks where there's rivers and it's you know sort of there is water around and basically in, in England you're never far from some water because most houses have got taps, but that's not really what I meant. It's, with, you know, every, it's a very small place. It's, you're never far from a river or a stream or a lake or a beach. You know, not that far away from anything. And there's always countryside not far away. It's, you know, it's not, it's a very, very small country compared to a lot of other countries probably one of the smallest countries in the world but I don't know any different because I've been here all my life I've only where have I visited so I've been to Ireland and that's a smaller country than this one I've been to Spain I went to Malaga, so I went to Spain for the afternoon once, back in 1989. And I got a, yeah, I got a plane there, and then I came back the same day. I was going there to live and work, but I didn't take enough money with me, so I came back. I only really had enough money to pay for the taxi driver, and also for a Mars bar and a can of Coke and the return journey home on the tr on the plane. So yeah, that was a kind of strange day. So I went to Spain then, so I've been to France. I traveled through France in 19, again, I think that was 1989. Or was it 1988 that I went to Spain? It might be 1988, but 1989 is when I went to um, France, and I travelled all the way through France, from Calais all the way to the Alps, south of France and all that way, just hitchhiked and got trains and buses and, you know, just made our way up there. I went to Paris and I think we went to Paris and we had a pizza had a it probably wasn't a pizza hut but it was it was a restaurant but we had a pizza and then came back so I've been there where else have I been I've been to the Isle of Man which technically is not another country, but it's, it's across the sea, so it's another island. It's uh, so it's Isle of Man. So I've been there, got a family that lived there. That was in 2004. And I went there with my dad and my stepmom and my nan. So yeah, we went there for about three days, I think. On the way there we went to Blackpool because we were going to Liverpool to get the ferry, the, the boat, the ship and uh, it was like the windiest day ever in Blackpool. And then in 2002 I travelled to Bulgaria 
for about a week and that was to go snowboarding so yeah that was that was kind of one of my worst and best holidays I've been on it's kind of a mixture but it was uh, quite a very very much an experience I don't think I've been anywhere else no I've been to Wales and I might have been to Scotland I can't remember but that would be when I was a kid I moved around a lot when I was younger I've actually lived in 40 different places, 40 different homes since I left school, over 40 different places. Not different parts of the country, but just, you know, around the, mainly the south, south of the country. London and I lived in Bognor Regis for a while. tapestry that is my life what other boring stuff can I talk about I shaved my head today I thought maybe I thought you know the temperature the weather's getting colder it's much you know I know what I'll do I'll take a I'll get rid of all my natural thermal insulation so I shaved my head and my beard. I did this once on, I think it was two days before Christmas and it was snowing outside. I think this is about 2008, about 2008. And we had like one of the, the, the winniest Win winteriest winters like snowiest for many years for some reason I decided to shave my head and you know it was so cold I really shouldn't have done that but it's okay I wear a hat and that's what I do and the good thing about shaving my head is within a week it'll start to grow out it's a bit like one of those, um, what are those dolls that you used to be able to get and you could squeeze their head and the hair would just put, just squirt out of the top of the head. My head's a little bit like that. The hair just grows. I've got very quick growing hair. You know, if you come back, if, if I just didn't make a video for two weeks and I came back, I'll have a beard and hair. Not, it won't be like massive, but definitely won't be as short it is as it is now but it wouldn't be shorter would it I suppose so this is this is it really I suppose I should uh, say goodbye done the little recording live let me boy to sleep and I think listening to this when it's not live is probably maybe more advantageous in a sense of you falling asleep it's really easily to my voice talking and at the same time, if you are awake when I'm making it, I can be a little bit of company, maybe. Or not, depending on your particular situation. And that's it, I'm gonna go. Thank you for those of you that have watched and listened and been part of yet another historic hour of 
talking about stuff. And if you well, you're welcome to contact me or privately message or anything if you want. But I'm gonna go now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And those of you which will be a much more more of you that will be watching this after the event, whether on Facebook, on YouTube, on my website, those of you that are listening on SoundCloud, on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, on my website, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you're listening to this, thank you for listening. And please share this with just if there's someone that has annoyed you you could just share this with them so that say oh you should listen to this it's really interesting this bloke's really really interesting it's gonna blow your mind with interest and then I'll put it on and it'll just be me talking about a phone book and uh they won't know what to make of it. And that'll be your revenge. <laughs> so I'm going to go. Thank you for listening, watching, and being wonderful. Bye.